it's time for another edition of Mets Musings. Hi, this is Ron Darling. Uh, This is Skip Lockwood. Hi, I'm Ron Swoboda of the 69 New York Mets, and you're listening to Mets Musings with Gary Mack. Now it's time for some New York Mets baseball talk. Here's Gary Mack bringing you the latest news and analysis from Mets Nation and the world of baseball on another edition of Mets Musings. Hello and welcome to another edition of Mets Musings. I'm your host, Gary Mack. And I am excited this week to be joined by former Mets shortstop and former Long Island Ducks manager, Kevin Baez. Kevin, welcome to Mets Musings. Glad to be with you. Kevin, so uh, you've been around a little bit now and uh, drafted in 1988. Uh, You're a Brooklyn guy, so... Uh, what was that like that night when you got drafted by the New York Mets? Amazing. Uh, you know, I'm from Brooklyn. I born and raised Bensonhurst Bay Ridge, went to Lafayette high school, uh, Met fan growing up. Uh, so, uh, when I got the call, it was the New York Mets. Uh, and then two years before that, they went to the world series. So, uh, uh, very excited. Yeah. And, and, you got to uh, come up with the match. You came up in 1990 and uh, uh, played a couple of games then. And uh, again in 92 and 93. And 93 was your best year. You played in 52 games, I think it was that year. And uh, yeah. uh, you played really, you really played with some very good ball players. Those There were some good <laughs> ball players on those teams. I mean, you had. Absolutely. Uh, Howie Johnson was still there, and Tony Fernandez, and yeah. uh, hey, Strawberry. Harry. Yeah. Um, what was it like to play with those guys? And did they uh, talk about the championship at all? The ones that had been there for that? Yeah. When I first got there in 1990, I was a September call up, uh, and they were on the verge of making the playoffs. I think they just came up short, so I was a playoff. Uh, in case they made it, I was uh, I was able to play in the playoffs if it need be. But uh, you know the uh, Doc and Strawberry and uh, and the memories uh, when I first got there were great. Uh, they spoke about the, the you know the championship they had won a couple of years ago, uh, but also at that time, uh, Strawberry was talking also about going to LA. So uh, he was going to the Dodgers the, the next year. So, but they were great teammates, uh, great guys. Uh, like you said, I played with a lot of guys and a lot of Hall of Famers, too, uh, on the team. Uh, Eddie Murray, right. one of them. Eddie Murray. Uh, yeah, so uh, it was just a great, great time. Uh, you know, and all of a sudden, you know, a couple of years later, you're you're not there anymore. So, uh, But I always uh, look back, and there was uh, great memories for me. Now, when you, you know, when you realize that you more or less uh, uh, were – not done playing ball, but you were still a young man. Um, what was that feeling kind of like? That had to be very, uh, uh, you know, well, yeah. uh, painful at that a, point. A little bit. Yeah, I mean, I was, I got, like you said, I got drafted in 88 and I got to the Bay Leagues in 90, you know, uh, two years. And that's usually, you know, unheard of really that quick. So, uh, right. uh, you know, I was, like I said, I was young. Uh, I wasn't ready, I don't think, for the Big Leagues then. Uh, uh, and I was and then uh, after that I was up and down, up and down. I got my opportunity, like you said, in '93. Uh, that was my my chance. And, and and one thing about this game, uh, you don't produce. Uh, you know, they find somebody else, they get rid of you. In '91, I got hurt, so that kind of hurt me a little bit because I was out the whole year. I got hit in the face with a fastball up at bat and uh, was out for the whole year. Uh, so that kind of derailed me a little bit. But uh, that's part of the game, and injuries are part of that. Uh, came back and like you said, uh, 93, I had my chance. I played 50 something games. Uh, I just didn't hit enough. And then I got sent, uh, then I got traded to uh, Baltimore. And then there went my uh, major league career and there went my minor league career from there on. <laughs> but you, you know, you accomplished something that I always say that a lot of people that, uh, you know, as young boys and yeah. uh, dreamt of doing, you made it to the major leagues. I mean, 
uh, you know, you've got a, a, your names on baseball reference yeah. and then, uh, yeah. uh, you know, nobody can ever take that away from you. No matter what happens, uh, you, you fulfilled that dream and that's got to count for something in life. A hundred percent. I mean, that's what keeps me going. That's why I always think back of all the kids I grew up playing and Gil Hodges little league and Lafayette high school and, mm-hmm. and, and just playing and all these kids that, you know, wanted to get to the big leagues and I was one of them. And to all my friends, you know, I was probably the only one so I could think of. So, you know, and I look back and, you know, that's what keeps me going, too. I know how hard it is to to get there, yeah. but I know how harder it is to stay. So, uh, yeah. you know, baseball wins is good. To you brought me a lot of things. And, uh, you know, now I give back. I do a lot of camps and lessons now. And I do still stay with the Mets. And I do the Mets fantasy camp as well. Mm-hmm. And, you uh... So you, you your major league career was over, but you uh, uh, went and played the pro baseball in the Atlantic League, which is uh, a, a really a good, solid league out here, not only on Long Island, but it's starting to spread throughout the uh, uh, East Coast, more or less. And uh, you end up with the Long Island Ducks out here on Long Island and uh, had a, a good career there and ended up coaching and playing third base. And you were on that uh, 2004, the first championship team. How, how did that yeah. feel to win a championship? Talk about that a little bit. Yeah, I mean, uh, like I said, New York native and uh, got a chance to play for Long Island Ducks. I didn't know it was when I first uh, got a call from Buddy Harrelson about coming to join the uh, independent uh, Long Island Ducks. Uh, joined and was one of the best decisions I made because I got to play still some more. Even, uh, you know, I was a little older, but I still enjoyed playing. I still wanted to play. And that gave me the uh, opportunity to play. Uh, won a championship. Got to, got to play with another bunch of, uh, of friends and teammates and uh, played and then coached and then managed with them. So uh, it was a long career with Long Island Ducks. Yeah, and you managed for a number of years with them and, in fact, won two championships back-to-back and I can remember watching those uh, uh, last couple of innings of those games. It's a little difficult on YouTube, but I remember how exciting it was to watch those and, and to uh, to get the championship. And uh, uh, they've really done a great job out there in uh, Central Islip with the Ducks, 100%. Frank Bolton and uh, Buddy yes. Harrelson. And uh, it really is a, a, a success story. Yeah, no doubt. Frank Bolton and Buddy Harrelson and uh, Mike Fapp is the GM president now, and he does a great job there. And like I said, Frank Bolton bought the uh, the league and, uh, and the Long Island Ducks into existence in uh, 1999 or 2000, and uh, it's been uh, it's been growing ever, ever since. So they do a great job. Yeah, they do a terrific job, and because now they're a, a partner with uh, Major League Baseball in uh, almost like an experimental league. They uh, try different rule changes and things for the uh for the majors now and uh but uh, yeah. that was that was a little bit after your time but you left the ducks uh now did you leave on your own or uh uh was there well it was yeah, yeah. <laughs> well it was uh, a long time i was there and then uh, frank bolton and michael faff were great to me and it still are great to me uh buddy harrelson as well uh, I was there a long time, and it was an opportunity to go in Rockland uh, Boulders, uh, where I went to college up there, another independent league, and I had an opportunity to go there. So they were, uh, you know, they gave me their blessings, and uh, they sent me on my way. And then that's when they got Wally back. And so uh, it was a win-win for everybody, but uh, mm-hmm. nothing but good things about the Long Island Ducks and what, you know, Frank Bone and Mike Faf do for that organization and Long Island. And they seem to have a... a- almost like a connection to the Mets in certain aspect yeah. uh, from Buddy Harrelson. And then you mentioned Wally Backman and uh, uh, I think Gary Carter was there. And, yeah. Gary uh, Carter was the manager. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. Uh, they were Bill Pulsifer. Really... Yep. Pulse was on my team in 2004 at the championship. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and so uh, a connection there is that, I wonder, is that, uh, you know, on purpose or it just happens to work out that way? I, I think it's a combination. You know, I think it helps that, uh, you know, you're a New York uh, organization, uh, you know, playing in New York. So it, it kind of helps if you have some New York 
uh, players that, that played for the either the Mets or the Yankees. So I think that helps. We had the close of Frankie Rodriguez a number of years ago. We have Ramon yeah. Castro, the catcher. Uh, yeah. So a lot of ex-Mets, uh, Carlos Baerga. <laughs> so, uh, you know, you know, good players and, uh, and ex-Mets and ex-Yankees, that always helps. Yeah. And, and I think, you know, it's the kind of league uh, that, it, you know, if you can accept it, um, I, I guess you, you can make a nice living, especially out here in Long Island. There are a lot of extra opportunities and. Oh, absolutely. And, absolutely. But it's I more, mean, it's more for uh, the Atlantic league is more for an, uh, another opportunity. And right. that's why I, went, I was the manager and, uh, you know, we used to tell the guys, this is an opportunity. There's an opportunity to keep playing and let organizations know that you're still playing and playing well. Uh, here's an example of 2003. I I was able to start playing with the uh, with the Island Ducks and kind of my career with them for a couple of years. But when I was doing so well, the Cincinnati Reds called and I went to AAA. So um, that's, what, that's what I always told the guys. You never know. Play with the love and passion of this game. And uh, you know, the guys pick up and go on to uh, to back to the Yeah, and uh, it certainly is that, and does a good job at that. And you mentioned Buddy Harrelson, of course. Um, uh, you you had a connection with Buddy back in the Mets organization. I believe he was your manager in 1990. And uh, then, of course, uh, he was your your boss uh, somewhat, and uh, he helped you coach in uh, the Ducks with the Ducks. So uh, talk about Buddy Harrelson. It's a shame uh, what's happened to him physically, but uh, talk a little bit about yeah. Buddy, if you will. Yeah, like you said, uh, Buddy was my first major league manager, so that's uh, all into my heart. Uh, then we came really close. He was my bench coach. I was my coach uh, for a number of years, uh, and Buddy was uh, the ultimate professional, uh, the ultimate, I mean, just a great, great person. So I got to know him on that side, not just the baseball side, but uh, personal level. He was really, really close, and seeing the struggles he's going through now, you know, breaks my heart, but I do know the, uh, the person, uh, the great person that he is. Yeah, it really is a shame. I had the pleasure of meeting him a couple of times. Uh, once was in the 1994 at a, a Mets thing at Shea Stadium, uh, and uh, just the nicest guy in the world would sign everything and for you. And uh, it's really a shame what's happened to him, but uh, we we keep him yeah, in our prayers. Saying, absolutely, we have a saying: if you don't live on Long Island and you don't have houses, uh, autographs, songs around for you, because. Like you said, the uh, he would sign forever and not have a uh, not have a problem signing, 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 signing. So, uh, what a great person! And uh, you know, we definitely our hearts and prayers and go out to his family. Yeah, uh, and Kevin, how has the you've been in the game now a while? I mean, you've seen it all. You've been a manager, coach, a player. How has the game changed since? When you were a kid playing the game, well, in the game itself, uh, as far as maybe the little league hasn't really changed much, but as far as the professional uh, avenue has changed because now there's more emphasis on exit below, uh, more uh, numbers and you know, numbers and shifting and all that stuff. So, uh, as far as that goes, you know, I don't want to coach that match. I always look at numbers and stuff like that. I mean, you're trying to get the the best decision with the uh, advantage you can. It's now just getting more data involved, so I guess it's just out there. We're breaking up a little bit, Kevin. So, uh, oh, I think we lost you completely now. Uh, just try your audio, and we'll see how that works. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, I can. I can't see you. Oh, well, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you were saying about how the game was changing to how different it is today. Yeah, just, just more and more, you know, uh, about the numbers of the XB um, uh, and all of the data that they're getting, the uh, looking at stuff and shifting and all that. 
wolf back then. That's all. But uh, you still got to throw a strike. You still got to hit the ball. And now it's more, you know, uh, home runs are, you know, uh, they're looking for that more. You know, back when I played, you know, we didn't really like to strike out too much. So uh, now it's all acceptable. Yeah, I, and I'm not. Uh, I'm I'm old school, so it's not acceptable to me. But I, <laughs> hey, look, what can I do? I got nothing to say about it. <laughs> yeah, no, I agree. Okay. Uh well, Kevin, I want to thank you for coming on. We're we're still breaking up, so I'm gonna let you go. Okay. And uh, thank you so much for your time, and I hope we can do it again sometime. Awesome. Awesome. Take care. Okay. Uh, bye bye, Neil. And I'll, I'll see you, <laughs> talk to you soon. And that was Kevin Baez. Uh, sorry for the little technical difficulties we may have had, but uh, wanted to keep it going. And I'll be back right after. Baseball and BBQ, your place for interesting baseball talk, opinions, and history. Baseball and BBQ, your place for barbecue recipes, tips, and interviews from the world of barbecue. If you like baseball and if you like barbecue, then tune in to Baseball and BBQ. Find us on iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, and BaseballTalkRadio.com. Wouldn't it be great if you could get a Ph.D. in life through baseball? Welcome to Baseball Ph.D., a tour company for your brain. 30 major league teams, 100 places to see. Let's touch them all as we make the road trip of a lifetime. Follow me on Facebook at facebook.com slash Musings. On Twitter, at Mets Musings GM. The Instagram is Mets Musings. And on YouTube, at Mets Musings Mac. Wish to be a part of the show? Give us a call at 516-619-6341. Okay, and we're back, and I hope you enjoyed that uh, interview. Sorry about the technical difficulties. That's what happens when you're doing a... A live interview. Uh, as you can see, he was in his car and uh, probably not in a good Wi-Fi area, but uh, did the best we could to get it to you. So I uh, hope you enjoyed what you did. Uh, were able to uh, hear anyway. Um, Matt Harvey's been a hot issue this week as he testified in the. Uh, uh, Eric K case, uh, Eric K worked for the angels and he is, uh, involved in the death of Tyler K Skaggs. Uh, if you remember, he overdosed on some drugs a few years ago and Matthew Har Harvey was, uh, called to testify and admitted to using cocaine, both in California and and in New York, and of course, that's that part of his testimony is blown up here in New York and on social media. And Terry Collins had some comments about it, and now he's getting killed on uh, social media, I guess, for the uh, the lack of uh, the Mets' assistance, uh, if you will. Um. Don't know if they could have done anything. Their hands may have been tied a lot by uh, the uh, CPA at the time, and uh, the uh, league took drug tests, and uh, it was whispered around that they knew Harvey was having some problems. I don't know if they knew to the full extent. They just thought it was a nightlife thing, uh, out partying too much, um, We'll never know if that that hurt his uh, career, uh, whether it played a part in his injuries. Would he have gotten injured more uh, as much as he did or less if he didn't party as much? We'll never know that. Uh, you'd have to assume that had he taken better care of himself, that the injuries may have not happened, may have not been as severe. Uh, maybe his recovery time would have been better. Who knows? Uh, but uh, another promising career, uh, much like uh, Dwight Gooden, though 
Gooden was a lot worse and uh, Strawberry was a lot worse than uh, uh, Matt Harvey, apparently uh, he, he was able to uh, at least be more functional at times. But uh, another promising career with someone who had the potential to be a Hall of Famer, perhaps. Um, and, it, and it goes away. It goes down the, the drain because of uh, drugs. So, um, you know, it, it's, it's all over MLB and SNY News and uh, the notes. So if you want to read about it, please do check it out and, uh, you know, see what it's all about. Uh, it'll be too much to go into here right now. All right, so uh, that's going to wrap it up. There's still no CBA and uh, no no settlement, no spring training, and we are at February the 17th. Uh, we should have had spring training opening, I believe, today or yesterday uh, or the day before that, perhaps. Um, and yet we have nothing. Uh, not even sure if there's any meeting scheduled. So um, this is not looking good for uh, we're not going to see baseball March 31st, I don't believe. So uh, it, it, anything could happen. We don't know what could what could happen. They could all have a change of heart and meet one another and get it done. But right now it doesn't look good. Uh, we're looking at probably some shortened season of some sort let's hope it's not another 60 game season uh perhaps they can get it done and uh do it <coughs> excuse me at least a uh, 150 game season if not more or go for the 162 but play some double headers to uh, get the games in but we'll have to wait and see for all of that. All right, I want to thank you all for uh, watching the show and, and listening to the show. If uh, you uh, are on YouTube checking out the show, please hit the like button and the subscribe button so you'll always know when a new show is available. And uh, the same thing if you listen to the show uh just listen to the audio version of the show, hit the subscribe button, and uh, you'll always know when a new episode comes out. You can do that on Apple Podcasts or Google Play, wherever your podcasts uh, come from, that you get them from. So please do that. And if you'd like to help out the show, please go to anchor.fm slash Mets Musings, and it'll tell you how you can donate to the show and help the show out there. And um, if you uh, want to, uh, you can also go to patreon.com slash Musings and help out the show there. All right. I uh, want to thank Kevin Baez once again for taking some time out of his schedule. And uh, we will see you again the next time. And until then, remember to keep the faith, stay optimistic, and let's go Mets. And I'll see you next time on another edition of Mets Musings. <laughs>